जहरा का गर है कर बो भला ऐसा लुटा फिर ना बसा जहरा का गर है कर बो भला जलजले में हो क्यों न नवा जलजले में हो क्यों न नए नवा क्यों न फिर ही ले दस्त कर बला हाय फौज ने छीन ली रिदा जहरा का गर है कर बो बला दम गुटा हुआ दिल रुंदा हुआ दम गुटा हुआ दिल रुंदा हुआ गर लुटा हुआ सर खुला हुआ चेहरे पे मले खाके कर बला जहरा का गर है कर बो भला सर पे शह नहीं मुझ तबा नहीं सर पे शह नहीं मुझ तबा नहीं मुर्तजा नहीं मुस्तफा नहीं होके बेनवा क्यों न फिर बला अजहरा का गर है कर बो बला देख कर जिसे महर तक छुपे देख कर जिसे महर तक छुपे बेरिदा करे ऐ फलक उसे रोह मुस्तफा जाने मुर्तजा जहरा का घर है कर बो बला दर्द हमसे मुँह सब अता हुआ दर्द हमसे मुँह सब अता हुआ देखे भाई का सर कटा हुआ शहर शाम में होके बेरिदा जहरा का घर है कर बो बला कब्र तक नहीं एक जा हुई कब्र तक नहीं एक जा हुई कोई है न जब शाम में कोई कोई काज में यूं जुदा जुदा जहरा का घर है कर बो भला ऐसा लुटा फिर ना बसा जहरा का घर है कर बो भला पर मोहम्मद वाले मोहम्मद सर Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Malim Dungarsi Sheikh Vinay Khetia Sheikh Qasim My elders, brothers and sisters Assalamu alaikum Tonight's uh, Niyaz Fund is still partially open um, Those who can contribute please assist um, We had a gentleman who came from the World Federation uh, project uh, Maybe a couple of weeks ago And uh, basically what they're doing is they're doing a project um, uh, trying to build a plan and a vision for the communities uh, that are served by the World Federation for the next 10, uh, 10 years or so. 
And he had a chance to uh, sit and meet with some of our committee members, um, the managing committee, some ladies, some seniors, uh, to get some feedback on um, some issues that you know, are pertinent for the World Federation. So based on this, because he didn't have enough time to meet the whole community and uh, because the timing was not uh, very convenient, they have put together a survey uh, which they're requesting the members to please uh, fill in. Inshallah, we'll be sending this out by email. And um, it's basically a way for them to get some feedback on the community members' relationship with our local Jamaat, with um, a regional federation, and with the World Federation also. So it will help give them back some uh, grassroots feedback. So inshallah, they'll come in the email. Please watch out for it, and uh, please uh, participate. Uh, Niaz on the second night was sponsored by the Khalfan family for all Marhumin. There was also Surya Sin um, Saleh Sawab for Marhum Mansur Ali Sultan Ali, Marhum Razak Sultan, Marhum Ashirin by Sultan, sponsored by Shamji family. Please let's recite Surah Fatiha for these Marhumin and for the Marhumin of the sponsors for tonight's program. Al Fatiha. Muhammad Wali Muhammad Salawat. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala ahli baytihi al-tayyabin al-tahirin al-ma'asumin al-madlumin. Wa la'natullah ya da'ima ala a'da'ihim ajma'ina min yawmina hadha ila yawmi deen. Amma ba'd, faqala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi muhkam al-kitab al-majid. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل ما يعب بكم ربي لولا دعاءكم فقد قذبتم فسوف يكون لزاما أمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوا على محمد وآل محمد I want to very quickly conclude yesterday's discussion because I didn't want to go too long and go over so there was one more part to the hadith that I did not have time to mention about Imam Bakr from Imam al-Bakr where he explains to us what akal is right ma'ubida bihi rahman wa iktusiba bihi al-jinan that akal is that by which we worship the merciful Allah our merciful Lord and that by which we are granted or earn paradise. So this is the definition of intellect according to our holy fifth imam. But there was a follow-up question. There was a follow-up question that the Sahabi asked the imam. It was a natural question. So the Sahabi turns to the Imam, he says, what about Muawiyah? Because he was brilliant. I mean, if we look at every step that Muawiyah took, from the moment he became the governor of Syria, until he became the Khalifa of Muslims, historians say there has not been a more brilliant mastermind politician in the history of Islam. Not even the second Khalifa could compete with him when it comes to this mastermind politics. Not even. And unfortunately, you know, there are some Muslims who describe him as the most best and most amazing Khalifa that Muslims have had after 
a minimum, like after the four. Because of how he kept the community together, his economic policies, um, just the way he did things. He was very sharp in his words. For example, let's see how his uncle operated. Before I answer, give the answer of Imam Bakr, I just want to put it in context. Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr, the son of Abu Bakr, the first Khalifa, who was a Shia of Imam Ali and an adopted son of Imam Ali, which is a, that's a different story for a different day and a different discussion, how the son of Abu Bakr ended up being the adopted, the foster son and Shia and governor of Imam Ali in Egypt. Muhammad wrote a letter to Muawiyah telling him that your claim to leadership is wrong. You have to respect the fact that Imam Ali has been appointed by the Prophet during the Prophet's lifetime. The son of Abu Bakr. This is, and when I tell my students this, sometimes some of them are in tears, some of them rip up the paper, some of them walk out the room, some of them come up to me after and say that, look, we have to start over our understanding of religion all over again because how could the son of Abu Bakr be writing such a letter? That's a different story altogether. But you should see the look on their faces. It's quite a quite an, uh, an interesting moment in the classroom, in the university. So he wrote this letter, tearing Muawiyah to shreds. Uh, you know, using words, describing him in a way which is not very friendly, so to speak. Muawiyah, shrewd man, writes back. This letter is preserved in Baladuri's Ansar and Minkari's Waqatu Sifin. There are some of the earliest books of Islamic history. Muawiyah writes back and he says, if you are accusing me of going against the Prophet, then you have to turn to your father first and his Farooq because they are the asas of everything that I am doing. That they have set the precedent. This is in books of Shia and non-Shia books. You'll find this in history books. In fact, there's an article written by a professor at the University of British Columbia uh, by the name of Maya Yazigi. She's a Lebanese scholar, Lebanese historian, not a Shia. She has written an article on this. So I'm not putting here extremism. This is it's history. You can find it in the books of history. It is what it is. So he writes back and he says, if you're going to treat me this way, then what do you think of your own father? Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr, oh, there was no jawab to the letter that we know of. That's a tough question. He put him between a rock and a hard place there. He says, if you're going to take me to task, then you got to go right back to the beginning. He was, well, I mean, and the language of the letter is so sharp, the Arabic is so eloquent. It's, it's, it's the, 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 you know, the phrasing is so poetic. And if you were to read it, you would say, this guy is brilliant. This guy is, wow, mastermind politician. I mean, he could, he could really keep you quiet in a few seconds. He had a way of giving jawab that other people could not give respond in this way. So the Sahabi asked Imam Bakr, what about Muawiyah? Isn't this akal in, at its finest, at its most pristine usage? Imam answers by saying, Hiya shabihatul akal. It is something that resembles akal, but it is not. Rather, it is nukura wa shaitana. It is trickery and a product of the army of shaitan. Meaning that there are two kinds of reasons. There are two manifestations of reason. One is divine. One is in line with Ahlul Bayt and the Prophet. The other one is something which is clothed in reason. But its, fun, its, its foundation is trickery and the work of shaitan. And sometimes we get mixed up between the two. It's very profound what Imam Bakr is saying. And he clarified this for his companion. And I wanted to finish the hadith because I did not get a chance 
to conclude the hadith. Salu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Thus, aql from the Islamic perspective is of two kinds or two manifestations. First is a belief in Allah, proving the belief in Allah, understanding why Allah exists, why Allah is one, why Allah, there is tawheed, so on and so forth. The second aspect of aql is akhlaq, transforming our behavior, our morality, our speech. And these two must coexist together in order for us to not be jahil. And these two must coexist together in order for us to claim to love Imam Hussein as a true claim. To be sadiq. And these two must coexist together. That is the belief in Allah, the understanding of who is Allah, and spiritual transformation, transformation of our behavior in order to be considered a Shia because it is amongst the necessary attributes of being Shia to Ali Muhammad. Salu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Oh. And then all of our decisions. The priorities that we make in our life, the job that we choose to work, the school that we choose to go to, the spouse that we choose, the words that come out of our mouth, all of this is filtered through our akal. And that akal is based on Allah's teachings and His Messenger. But when our priorities and our decisions are not made using the right tools, then we run into problems. Then we run into this, oh, I want to run away with this boy, or I want to run away with this girl, or uh, why can't we do this and why can't we do this? The whole fundamental philosophical reason for these problems is that the decisions to begin with were based on the hawa and the desires of shaitan and not the mashiyat and the irada of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is precisely what Imam Bakr is hammering at here. This is what he is pointing at again and again. And that's why the Quran describes those who are not moved by salah, who are not moved by Allahu Akbar, who are not moved when they hear the adhan as a people who don't use their intellect, la yaqilun. And this fundamental distinction is the core to our religion. This is dinyat 101. This is the first thing that someone learns when they want to become a Muslim. The first thing. This is like the bottom basement. Before we move to even the second floor, the third floor of anything, we have to first understand how to make decisions when we make them. Salu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. And then when we go to the second stage, we realize that this uncle of mine cannot be shaped without divine assistance. That it cannot be truly refined and formed and become luminous and pure without istighatha to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he is a ghiyath. Ghiyathul mustaghithin. And that's why prayer is fundamental to aql. And that's why Imam Bakr said, it is aql, it is through aql that we worship the Rahman. That is why Imam Hussein has said that it is our aql that worships Allah. Bi ukulin tad'uk. Right in the kunut of Imam Hussein. So let's go to Imam Hussein now. Remember I said in the first night that we will talk about the road to Allah through Imam Hussein. And we will be bewildered and intoxicated with the love of Imam Hussein, inshallah. 
So this, what I'm about to present is for the Ashikin of Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein went for Hajj. This is according to a very reliable report in the Manaqib of Ibn Shahr Ashub, one of our earliest books of hadith. I'm only mentioning that in, some, in case someone says, oh, he must have just found something in some book and presented it, just to, you know. It's found in a very old book of hadith. Imam Hussein goes for Hajj. Anas ibn Malik is with the Imam. He says, Imam decided to do the ziyarat of Bibi Khadija. Imam Hussein doing the ziyarat of Bibi Khadija. Think of the maqam of Bibi Khadija. Imam goes to do the ziyarat of Bibi Khadija. He stands at her grave and he tells Anas, move, idhab. Anas is like, what? He says, go. Anas said, I didn't go. I didn't go completely. Could you turn, turn the light down, please? It's kind of blinding. Salu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allah. Allah. So Anna says, I stepped away. I didn't go so far away so I could hear whatever was going on. And he said, I began to listen. Imam Hussein is standing at the grave of Sayyidah Khadija in Mecca during Hajj. <laughs> And he says, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, Anta Mawla. This is the munajat of Imam Hussain. How many of us know the munajat of, of Imam Hussain? How many of us even know that Imam Hussain has a munajat? This is for the ashiqeen of Imam Hussain. Because what I'm about to present, I mean, today I spoke for one hour with one of the top scholars of Najaf, who himself said, I'm completely floored. We will have to have a series of discussions about this. I just got off the phone with Sheikh Mohammed Hassan al muballiq at Kashif al ghita Foundation in Najaf. Imam begins, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, Anta Mawla. My Lord, my Lord, you are my master. He says, have mercy on, your, on, on the servant, ilayka malja'a, have mercy on the servant that runs to you for shelter. Meaning we have no shelter but God. That we can run here and there, but our only shelter is with Allah. He says, Ma bihi il allatun wa sukmun. He says that this slave of yours has no sickness or ailment greater. Aktharu min hubbihi li mawla. Akthar more than the love and the drowning love for his mawla. That there is nothing that makes that. There is no sickness, there is no ailment, there is nothing that drives me as crazy as my love for my Mawla, Ya Mawla. Can you imagine? Imam Hussein at the grave of Sayyid Khadija. Why the grave of Sayyid Khadija? That's a different discussion for a different day. I'm only doing ishara to it today. I don't even think we could do a full bayan of it. So he says that there is no ailment as great as my burning love for you. Allahu Akbar. He says, my Lord, you have brought me close. My Lord, you have brought me unto you. And then you know what happens? Ya Ashiqeen al Hussein, lovers of Hussein. This is deep. I mean, this is, this is a part where I was just floored completely when I was speaking to one of the great, one of the great scholars of Najaf just two hours ago. Then Anas bin Malik says, Wanudiya. And then a call came. Labek, labek ya abdi. My servant, I am here and I am Allah. <laughs> Allah responds to Imam al Hussein right then and there. Labek, labek, ya abdi, I am here, I am here, O oh my servant. Nudia meaning, there's no doubt, meaning Anas bin Malik is saying in Arabic, Nudia means ra'aytu, I saw it with my eyes. It is as certain as, yani hada qata, for certainty. We heard the response come to Hussein. Labek, labek, ya abdi. I am here, I am here, O oh my servant. Antafi <coughs> kanafi. You are in my care. Don't worry. Hasbuka sotik samianahu. 
Sufficient is your voice. We have heard it, O Hussein. Who is Hussein ibn Ali? Salu ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. Who is Hussein ibn Ali? Anta fi kanafi da'aka indi yajulu fi hujubi fahasbuka satr kad safarnahu he says that your dua is enveloped in, the, in, in, in various hijabs, in various veils. So I have done something for you, O Hussein. I have removed all the hijabs between me and you. Safarnahu. I have removed it so you see the divine reality, the haqq. This is in Hajj before Karbala. Could we imagine what the Imam saw on the day of Ashura? I've only quoted two lines from this. It's like ten lines. Ten abyat, baits in Arabic. No more. It's twenty baits, ten lines. Safarnahu. I've removed the hijab, Ya Hussein. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking to Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Salu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Sotuka tashtaqu, tashtaquhu malaikati, that your voice is yearned for by my angels. That my angels wait in, in anticipation to hear the sot of Hussain. Ya Shaqeen al Hussain. He, Allah then tells Imam al Hussain, Ask me, ask me anything that you want. For there is no hisab for you, Hussain, in whatever you ask. Allahu Akbar wa lillahi alhamd la ilaha illallah. Why? For anna Allah. I am Allah, O Hussain, and I have introduced myself to you. Ask whatever you want, there is no hisab for you here. Don't worry. Bila Rakba. Without any sense of obligation, Hussein. Don't feel any obligation to ask me. Ask me anything. The veils have been lifted, the door has been opened. Come to me, O oh Hussein. This is Anas bin Malik, great Sahabi. Great Sahabi, Thiqa. I was so shocked by it, I phoned some of the scholars, as I said, in, in the holy city of Najaf. I was so floored by that. Before I presented, I said, is this extremism? They said, no. Because the Imams have said, nahnu afdal min, that we are afdal to the Anbiya of Bani Israel. And the Imam is Warith Musa Kaleem Allah. The Imam is the successor of Musa who was the Kaleem of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> yes or no? Kaleem Allah means what? The one that is spoken to by Allah. If the Imam is Afdal to Hazrat Musa, and he's the Warith of Kaleem Allah, then how could Allah not speak to Imam al-Hussein? And it reminds me of a beautiful ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces himself to Nabi Musa. Where Allah says to Nabi Musa in Surah Taha, Wa alqayta alayka mahabbatan minni, that I've enveloped you with my love. Wa litusna'a ala aini, so that you are raised, your tarbiyat is done under my supervision. If this is Allah's love and relationship with Nabi Musa, alayhi salam, as we read in the Holy Quran, then who is Hussein? If Hussein is not only Afdal to Musa, but the Warith and his Afdal to Musa, then how do we understand the relationship between Allah and Imam al Hussein? Why should he not speak to Sayyidul Shuhada? 
There are two kinds of inspiration. Ilham al-am wa ilham al-khas. There's an inspiration that you and I could get once or twice in our life or some great scholars, which is, for example, we're about to do something and somehow we're averted from danger. That is Allah's inspiration. That is normal. And for those who are, of us who have had the opportunity to be touched by God in our life, we can testify to that. However, there's another kind of inspiration which is that which is reserved for the prophets and the masumin in general. And this is just a glimpse of the insight into Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Now imagine something else. Remember, I said we will talk about the road to God through Imam al-Hussein. I meant it when I said it. There's something else here. My teacher narrated to me a story about his teacher in the city of Qom. That they were on a boat in the Arabian Gulf, in the Persian Gulf, and they were stormy and the boat was about to sink. Happens, right? Maybe you're on a fishing vessel or something. He said, the only thing I had was a turba of Imam Hussein. This is my teacher telling us. He says, I took that turba and I threw it into the ocean and the ocean stopped. I took that turba, that sand from Karbala, and I sprinkled it, and put it into the, into the water. And the storm ended. If that's the sand that Hussein laid on, what about the akal and the ruh of Hussein? If that is the status of the turba of Imam Hussain, which was graced with his blood and his body to fall on it, what about the qalb of Hussain, the ruh of Hussain, the aql of Hussain, the iman of Hussain, his heart, his faith, his intelligence? That's beyond la <laughs> That's beyond idrak. It's beyond conception and understanding. And that's why the lovers of Hussein will forever be drowning in his love. Because it is an endless love. It is an endless obsession. It is an endless and limitless exploration. And here we are as the aashiqeen of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. And this is just a drop in the bucket. I've only quoted two lines. The other ones are so deep that some people might turn around and say, this guy is. Has, is no longer Muslim, you know. <laughs> so I won't even continue. You know, they may, people may say, oh, this is, I don't know about this, you know. We've only quoted the PG lines from it, so to speak. <laughs> There's more to this, to the munajat of Imam Hussain. The Imam says, Or rather, Allah tells Imam al Hussein that you have drawn so close to me. That you fall onto your face wrapped up in my light. That my light is your clothing. Your libas is my nur. Kharra sari'an. You just collapse in front of me. And you're covered. Takhshahu. That my light, the anwar of Rabbul Alameen, the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, covers the imam, envelops the imam. 
that his libas, his outer covering, that is the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now imagine this man laying on the ground for over three hours as he died. Some tell us, our mujtahideen, that it took longer for Imam al Hussein to die than the whole battle of Karbala. Now, could we imagine what the Imam was whispering to Allah as he laid there for three hours? He was dying of thirst, he was dying of wounds. This is until Shimur came and finished, did what he did. That that time was profound. It was a very long amount of time, long period of time. Inshallah, on the day of Ashura, we will explore some of these moments from the life of the Imam. In that moment, the Imam engaged in a conversation with God which is unknown. And we will devote an entire night to that conversation. But if this is a relationship of the Imam in Mecca during Hajj, what is his relationship with Allah when his infant child is, is, is covered in blood and his entire chest is covered in blood? When he said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'un. What do these words mean to the one whom Allah has already told? Labaik, labaik, ya abdi. You are already with me. This is what a middle mu'minin means in Nahj al when he says, Kulubuna fi jinan wa ajsaduna fil amal. That our hearts are already in the jinan, but our bodies are at work in this world. When Imam describes himself in Ahlul Bayt, he says, Kulubuna fil jinan. That our hearts are in the gardens of paradise, but our bodies are at work toiling in this world until we leave from here 50, 60 years, 40 years, 20 years, whatever it is. Hussein's heart was already resting at the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he said, Radan bi qadaik wa tasliman li amrik, that I'm satisfied with you, I've returned to you. Can we understand this? O oh, lovers, Azadar Hussein? Who is Imam al Hussein? There's so much more to say, we will discuss it on other nights. But I don't want to go too much, then accusations come and all kinds of things sometimes. Then people say, you know, kafi. And I don't know what it is, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me the opportunity to fall in love. So I'm just sharing that love with you. Salaam ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Furqan, say to the people that you have no worth that had it not been for your prayer, O mankind, you would have no worth in the eyes of God. This is a verse from the Quran. Very powerful. Had it not been for your prayer, for your devotion, for your dua, for your salah, for your munajat, you would have, now I'm not saying you as in you, this is the ayat of the Quran, I'm translating it, I'm not projecting it at you, this is the ayah, that you, O oh mankind, would have no worth, no qimat, no meaning in the eyes of God. My dear brothers and sisters, this is a very powerful verse. And if we believe the Quran to be the word of God, 
then the imams have told us, and I'll repeat this again, they often say, kafa bima Allah. That when we quote an ayat of the Qur'an, it is enough. Kafa bima Allah azza wa jal. That one ayat of the Qur'an is enough for the mu'mineen and the mu'minat. It's kafi, and if it's not kafi for me, then the Qur'an is not for me. Because as Shams Tabrizi has said, the Qur'an is ishqnaameh. It is a love letter from God. And those who see the Qur'an as a love letter from God, for them everything that their beloved has said is kafi. And the beloved Allah, the Rahman, the Wudud, the Rahim has said that we have no meaning in his eyes without our prayer. Because that is the only thing that ties us to God, that, that, that um, engenders that relationship and that qurba and closeness to God. So without a life of prayer, we have not lived a life at all. Without a life of devotion, we have failed to live altogether. This is what Allah is saying in the Quran. Because if we have no meaning in the eyes of God, then our life has no meaning. This is from the Quran. I'm according to Hadith. This is one eye of the Quran. And sometimes we have trouble digesting this because we live in a world where people have tried to reinvent human beings. as those who exist and experience things only on a horizontal level. And a great theft has occurred. A great robbery has occurred. And that is the theft of the sacred, of all that is holy. It has been taken from us. It has been robbed from us. And often some of us cannot relate to the Qur'an or relate to, to these kinds of statements because we are so disconnected from a sense of wonder, amazement, ajab, love, fear of that divine realm, of that unseen realm that we can't relate to the Qur'an, we can't relate to dua, we can't relate to hadith. We have so much trouble falling in love because we've loved the wrong things for so many years. And when we've loved the wrong things for so long, we have trouble loving Hussein in all reality. Because there's a certain problem, my dear brothers and sisters. I will address this in more depth tomorrow night. But when we are not amazed by God, we will be amazed by something else. Because as human beings, we always have to be amazed. We crave excitement, yes or no? We do. We're human beings. We crave roller coaster rides. Why do we enjoy roller coaster rides? It gives us a rush. Why do we enjoy driving fast? Some of us. It gives us a rush. Some people take this to, external, to extreme limits in drugs and alcohol. Because human beings crave that sense of wonder. But if we're not in love with God and the lovers of God, we're going to be in love with someone or something else. And that's the opposite gender, that's wealth, that's power, and status. And the problem is, when we're amazed by those things, we cannot find it in our heart to be amazed with God. Because there's only room for one love in, in our hearts. Ahlul Bayt have said this, the Quran has said it. That there are not two qalbs in the jawf of insan. Qalbain. It's only one. We either love Ahlul Bayt with that and are against their enemies, or we are not. 
This is what Amir al-Mu'mineen has said. But the problem is when we're constantly in love with other things. I'm not saying not to love our family. We love our family as signs of God because God has commanded us to love them. God has told us that this is, a, this is their haq. This is your obligation to love them, to show them love. But when our love for things are it's not channeled through the love of the Rahman, through the love of his beloved, which is Imam al-Hussein, the Prophet and the Masumin, that love gets messed up. It gets skewed. It gets really disturbed. And then we find ourselves, God forbid, going to certain extremes, like some people in drugs and alcohol. Or in taking very foolish risks. We find ourselves needing to skydive, jump out of a plane at 30,000 feet, or something like that. We find ourselves, you know, some people, you know, eating, you know, eat, doing, going to eating competitions. Why? Or eating, how, how many people can eat how many cockroaches at once? Or hot dog competitions. Why? Why, though? Because they love something else. They've not found that love of the one whose love is infinite. That food will come in, and when it comes out, it won't be great. And that love of that person, when it's given to that person without the sake of God, will end up fooling us in the end. Right? People have destroyed their families, they've destroyed their lives out of misplaced love. And we will talk about that on its, in separately. And this is the, one of the reasons why we have trouble praying. Salu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Did you know even the ancient Egyptians, even the ancient Egyptians knew that the only way forward was the way through prayer. In fact, they had books of du'as or they had hieroglyphic texts of du'as. Recently, one of my professors uh, at the University of Toronto just did research showing that ancient Egyptians had a word for du'a in their hieroglyphics. And you know what it is? Hands like this. And in one of their du'as, they say, my heart longs to see you. You made me see the darkness. Now create light for me so I may see you. If the ancient Egyptians knew that there is this universal reality, this universal truth, We should think about it. Or Socrates, the famous you know, Greek philosopher, he says 2,500 years ago, grant to me that I be made beautiful in my soul, within and, and that all external possessions be in harmony with what is within. May I consider the wise man rich, and may I have only such wealth that I can bear. The, some of the greatest thinkers that have walked the earth, aside from NBA and Mursaleen, of course they are a'adham, no one can ever come close to the NBA and Mursaleen, a'imma. But aside from that, the wise people that have walked this earth know that the only way forward to a life of satisfaction, a life of peace, and a life of harmony is prayer, and that is the road to the Lord. There's no other viable road. And there is a lot to lose when we don't pray. There's a lot to lose. Because it is through prayer that we discover the meaning of life. It is through prayer that we discover the meaning of death. It is through prayer that we discover why we exist. It is through prayer that we discover the meaning of suffering. It is through prayer that we learn to deal with suffering. The only thing that can heal the heart of a parent that has lost a child is prayer. And Imam al Hussein alayhi salam is a testament to that. Umm Kulthum is a testament to that. Sayyidah Zainab is a testament to that. Prayer, prayer, prayer. 
It's the only thing. And then we hear, so to speak, the voice of God. Not literally, I mean. And we realize that we are in God's care. And we are able to move on to see the light of the next day despite the fact that my child has died in my arms. That is the power of prayer. And if we lose it, we have lost. Had a khusranun mubina. It's the greatest loss, clear loss. And we wonder why we need so many antidepressants and things like that, right? We need to find God again. Salu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. I'm not sure how long I've gone, so give me a sign when there's 10 minutes left or 5 minutes left or something. Okay. The love of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam. Salu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. When we talk about Imam al-Hussein, we go in different, different dimension, different realm of existence, you know, of the world, of the universe, of the cosmos. Let us turn to another du'a of Imam al-Hussain. On the plains of Arafah, خَرَجَ مِنْ فُسْطَاتِهِ وَرَفَعَ رَأْسُهُ وَيَدَيْهِ That he came out of his tent, ex tempo, lifts his head to the sky in his hands and he says, اِبْتَدَعْتَنِي بِنَعْمَةِ قَبْلَ نَكُونَ شَيْئًا مَذْكُورًا That, O oh Allah, you initiated me before I was something worthy of mention. That I existed in your knowledge before anything else. So I'm firstly thanking you for the very fact that you conceived of creating me. Before I was anything, I existed in your knowledge. That you decided to conceive of a person named Hussein. Before anything. Before I was even a material existence, I was nothing, but I'm thanking you. And it is an honor the fact that you chose to think of me. Look at this. this is, I mean, he, he doesn't even want to begin with the physical. He's going to a completely different world. Of course, this is an ayat from the Quran itself. Hala ta'ala insanin. من دهر هنا لم يكن شيئا مذكورا. It's an ayat from the Quran. I've just paraphrased the ayat. Then he says, وَخَلَقْتَنِي مِنْ تُرَاب. Then you created me from dirt. And then you placed me in the aslab. You placed me in the genetic makeup of my fathers. You ensured that I would be protected. You ensured that this DNA from the time of Adam until my father would be protected through every century and every moment. You ensured that my genetic makeup would not be altered one iota. That you ensured that as this, gen this genetic makeup, this DNA passed from person to person to person, from Adam all the way to Amir al-Mu'mineen, you ensured that it would be just at the right time, in the right place, in the right conditions, and in the right environment in order for me to become a fetus in the womb of Sayyidah Zahra. You ensured this. La ilaha illa ant, ya mawla. You ensured this. You ensured that one light would merge with another light to make my light, and that's the light of Ali and the light of Fatima. You ensured this. Then you put me in three layers of darkness. You put me into the womb of my mother, between the abdomen, the womb, and the placenta. This is deep. Imam is going to deep issues here. Each one needs a bayan. Each one needs a separate muhadara and majlis. Each one, ya ashiqeen, lovers of Hussein. Each one. This is ex tempo. 
He was not reading from anything. Hadith didn't tell us he prepared it in the tent on Arafah and then memorized it and came to recite it. It is as if Hussein prays to God and gets a jawab from God in real time. So he prays and is inspired and prays again. So it's as if the will of God and the will of Hussein in the created realm, not in the essence of God, of course, that is unknowable, that there's a blurring of lines in what is created, though. Huh? There's a difference between Allah and His Zat. For those who study Sifat Salbiya, Thubutiya, we do teach this in the Madrasa, don't we? I don't want to go too deep. We'll leave it there. But we st I, I know our kids study in the Madrasa because I've seen the Madrasa textbooks. If you study in the Madrasa, study the Madrasa textbooks, you, this is understandable. If we've not studied the Madrasa text, any of our dinyat, then this is all going to be just too crazy. But this is again basic. If we have basic dinyat, then we understand the meaning of these lines. Salu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Wa hafiftani fil mahdi tiflan sabiya. And you kept me safe. You preserved me in the cradle as a baby. Wa razaktani min al ghadai labnan mariya. And you ensured that the milk would not drip out as I was nursed, but you ensured it would flow. He comes up with a special word to describe not dripping milk, but flowing milk. This is, this is, <laughs> he's not only saying you nourished me with milk, the milk of my mother. He's saying you nourished me with a milk that was Maria, flowing, that I never had to take a second suckle. I never felt thirsty. I never had to worry about it not coming out fast enough for me to be satisfied as, a, as an infant. Lebanon Maria, again a whole bayan, a majlis would need be, needed to be done on Lebanon Maria. In fact, there, there, you could write an entire volume only on this one word from Dua Arafah. Salu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. I'm just doing a shara here, shara to things. وَعَتَفْتَ عَلَيْ قُلُوبِ الْحَوَادٍ And you attached me to the bosoms. What does this mean? You know what he's saying? He's saying that when I was held, this is Ya Aba Abdullah. He's saying that you ensured that when someone would hold me that I was positioned perfectly between the elbow and the shoulder. That if they move this way or this way, I would be uncomfortable. Or I may fall. So you ensured that my body fit just perfectly in this part of the nurse's arm. And you ensured that my head would rest against her chest. Ya Abu Abdullah. Allahu Akbar. You know what another meaning of Hawadin? I don't want to go too deep, too deep, too deep, but it means it's another word for a bird that when a bird lifts its wing up and it brings a baby bird underneath and it covers it to protect it, this is what the Imam is saying. That I was cared for with so much mercy in the same way a mother bird would care for its young by lifting its wing and bringing it underneath. This is another meaning for Hawadin. وَكَفَلْتَنِيَ الْأُمُّهَاتَ الرَّهَائِمْ And God, you put me in the care of merciful mothers, that you ensure that whoever held me had mercy to me. Who can ensure that but you, Ya Allah? Who can ensure that my mother had mercy towards me, that she didn't want to throw me away and kill me? Who? Who ensured that, because he lived in a village. In a village, different maids and nurses would handle the baby. He says, oh Allah, you ensured that every nurse handled me with care. You ensured that. وَكَلَأْتَنِي مِنْ تَوَارِكَ الْجَانِ And you ensured that I was, as when I was sleeping, the jinn did not attack me. We will have a discussion on this. The Imam says that you ensured... That when I was a baby, the jinn did not hurt me. 
Meaning that it, there are jinns that can hurt children. This is our reality. That in the realm of the unseen, without istaada, without tawakkul ala Allah, there are evil, there are forces that when we can, we, then there are ways that we can expose ourselves to those forces. If we are not careful. This is very deep. That now he's going to the realm of jinn. He's left the realm of insan, he's moving to jinn now. And this is all while he's in the cradle in the city of Medina. We will have a whole bayan, inshallah, one night only on this. On the forces of evil and shar and jinn and insan. Salu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Ta'alayta ya rahim ya rahman hatta istahlaltu natiqan bil kalam. And you are glorified, you are high. You are the rahman, you are the rahim. And you ensured every year I would grow a little more. Every day I would grow a little more until I began to speak my first words. Istahlaltu natiqan bil kalam. That my, the first words that came from my mouth were because of you. You inspired me to speak. You gave me the power of speech. So the first words as an infant belong to you. You are the sahib of that kalam. And then you ensured that my mind was right so that I could find you. You ensured I was in the right place at the right time that I could find you in the way I needed to find you. Then you alerted me to your remembrance and to your obedience and to your worship at the right age, at the right time, and at the right moment. And then I became your servant. And now here I am standing on the plains of Arafah asking you for your mercy. Before the Imam even asks for anything, this is the introduction and the muqaddama to his asking. Salu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Brothers and sisters, we have to empty everything when we turn to God. We can't afford to be stingy in front of God. If we want to learn to pray, we have to put everything on the table. Everything. We can't hold anything back. And I swear to you, you will find the light of God in your heart. You will. You will. And that is a feeling and an experience unlike any other. And that allows us to get through the darkest days of our life. <coughs> but we have to put everything on offer to Allah. Everything has to be on the table. Everything has to be ready there. That is the condition. And that's what the Quran asks for. Inna mal mu'minun. Alladhina amanu. Thumma lam yartabu. That the believers are those in Surah Tujarat. Who once they believe in Allah and His Messenger, they don't turn back. وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And they struggle in the way of God with their wealth and their souls. أُولَيْكَ هُمَ الصَّادِقُونَ And these are the truthful people. The truthful people are those who gave their every effort to find God. That they'll die and they'll say, Ya Allah, I may have regrets, but there were times in my life where I tried my best. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that tawfiq, inshallah. As I said last night, there was another martyr that I wanted to mention before I get to the martyr of tonight. And that is an African slave by the name of John. 
He was the Mawla of Abu Dhar al Ghaffari. He was the servant of Abu Dhar until he became the servant of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. He arrives in Karbala with the Imam. The Imam turns to John and he tells him that this is enough, you go on your way, you don't need to die fi tariqatina. Do you know what John did? He fell to the ground. فَوَقَعَ جَانْ عَلَى قَدَمَيْ أَبِ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ That he fell onto the feet of Imam al Hussein, And he began to kiss the feet of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. And he said that I will never leave you. لَا أُفَارِقُكْ I will never leave you. Abada. I, my only hajat is that my blood be mixed with your blood. This is John the Christian convert. He killed 25 Umayyad soldiers until he was killed. And in fact, Imam Bakr tells us that it took 10 days to find the body of John. 10 days after Banu Asad buried him. And when they found him, his body smelt like fresh perfume. Imam Bakr tells us. And the 12th Imam says, As-salamu ala John, Mawla Abi Dhar Ghaffari. The Imam of Zaman has a special salam for John. John the servant. And there was another man. And it is on the day of Ashura that we observe this vastness of the heart of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. There was a man with a crisis of consciousness. There was a man who was responsible for halting the Imam's caravan in Karbala. But this man has now begun to wake up. He heard the call of Imam saying, Thumma sahah al Hussain. Hussain began, began to, to shout, Amma min mughithin yughithuna. That is there anyone to help us? Is there anyone that fears Allah and Rasulullah that can come to our aid? Upon hearing this, Hur approaches Umar ibn Sa'd, and he says, are, we, are you really going to fight this man? I think there was something in Hur that told him that this would come to an end. Umar ibn Sa'd said, if the battle goes well, the cutting of heads and the cutting of hands shall happen. Hur found himself in a major predicament. Because he was partly responsible for everything that has happened up to this point. His companion Muhajir bin Aus noticed that something was wrong. Hur was shivering, he was acting strangely. And he says, what is it that I see in him? And Hura says, Inni ukhayyuru nafsi bayna jannah wa nar. This is the point in his life, brothers and sisters. He says that now I am going to choose between heaven and hell. This is the ultimate choice, brothers and sisters. And he says, even if I was cut up and burnt, I will always cho choose heaven over hell. Look at the decision-making here. He then gets on his horse. He rides towards Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. He has his hand on his head. He comes to Hussein. He kneels in front of Hussein. And he says, Oh Hussein, I have turned in Tawbah to Allah. Will you accept my Tawbah today? Look at the heart of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. He could have easily turned him back. He could have easily said to hell with you. You have caused us so much pain and today you are asking for tawbah. You are coming back to me. Open your hearts brothers and sisters to whoever has hurt us. Whether it be friends or whether it be family, open your heart tonight. Bihaq al Hussein wa al Hussein alayhi salam. Hussein tells him, your tawbah has been accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> Look at the maqam of Hussein. He is in the authority to tell someone that their tawbah has been accepted. 
Hur now joins the army of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. And he says that I know that I have brought terror to the hearts of the children of Rasulullah. He expected nothing and he got everything in return. He says, May I be sacrificed for you, Ya ibn Rasulullah. It was unfathomable, brothers and sisters, unfathomable. And that is why Imam al Hussein gave Hur permission very early to go to fight. Hur goes out to fight. History does not tell us too many traditions, but what we know is that he was killed and he was beheaded. Thumma istashhada. Hur was killed. He's brought back to Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Imam puts him in his lap. Imam takes the body of Hur and he puts, him in, puts it in his lap. And he begins to wipe the blood and sand from his body. Can you imagine the blessings? Take your heart to Karbala, brothers and sisters. Salamu alayka, ya gharibul ghuraba. Imam al Hussein is wiping the sand from the body of Hur. He is laying there in the, in the, in the arms of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. And the Imam says, Anta al Hur, you are free as your mother had named you to be free. Fi dunya wal akhirah. That I, Hussein, am emancipating you. I, Hussein, are now telling you that you shall be free forever for your entire eternal life. Who is Hussein? Look at the Rahmah of Hussein, alayhi salam. After everything he went through, after everything that Hur did to him, he now tells him, I am giving you your freedom. You are hur in dunya and akhirah. Brothers and sisters, whoever we have a hatred towards, whoever we have a grudge towards, whether it be brother, whether it be a sister, whether it be a friend, whether it be family, open our heart tonight. Bihaq al Hussein alayhi salam. Bihaq hur alayhi salam. Let us forgive and forget. Let us learn to move on. Let us learn to turn the page in our life and repair the relations with those around us. We're told in a poem, brothers and sisters, Imam Zain al Abidin alayhi salam, he says, Ana Ali ibn Hussein. I am Ali ibn Hussein, the son. Al Madhubi Shatti Furati. That I am the son of the one that was slaughtered at the edge of the Furat. An Ghairi Dakhlin ala Turabin. I am the son of the one who was not only slaughtered, but his body was not even buried. His body was left on the dirt. Remember the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa masari'akum shatta that your body, your corpse shall be discarded as Imam al-Zaman tells us that they threw the Imam alayhi salam that they discarded him I won't even translate the word Uriyan we cannot translate the word of Imam Zaman, but he says that they threw my grandfather alayhi salam. Imam Al Mahdi will be by the Kaaba. This will be his scream. Ya al Muslimun, Ya al Insan, Jaddan al Hussein. That our grandfather Hussein was thrown. Uriyanan shat. Ha! Left completely alone. The Imam says, Imam Zain al Abidin says, Wa in tohiba maaluhu, wa subiya ayaluhu. That his wealth was stolen, his wealth was looted, his children were imprisoned. He says, Ana Ali ibn Hussein. I am the son of Ali ibn Hussein. Man kutila sabra. I am the son of the one that has been killed. I am the son of the one that has been butchered. Sabra. With patience. Wa fakhra. Wa kafa bidalika fakhra. And that is sufficient and honor for us, Ahlul Bayt. It is sufficient for us to know that my father was butchered, that his body was thrown, that his possessions were taken, that his children were imprisoned. Yet, Kutila Sabra, 
He died with his dignity. He died with patience. He died with his iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the fakhr and the pride for Ali Muhammad wa Shi'at Ali Muhammad. Ala la'anatullahi ala kawmi dhalimeen wa sayya'lamu alladhina dhalamu ay munqalibin yanqalibun ma'atma Hussain ya azadar Hussain ya azadar Hussain wa Hussaina wa Aba Abdullah Ya Hussain Ya Hussain Ya Hussain Ya Hussain Garm reti pa me girta hu sambhalo amma Garm reti pa me girta hu sambhalo amma Garm reti pa me girta hu sambhalo amma Thak gaya laash utha कर मैं भरे लश कर की लाशे कासिम की मैं लाया हूँ कभी अकबर की खुद बनाई है लहद मैंने अली अस गर की दो तसल्ली मुझे सीने से लगा लो موسیقی لایا تھا بازو اس کے آپ ایک کام کرے نہر کنارے جا کے میرے روٹھے ہوئے بھائی کو منا لو اما مرے تھی ہمیں سمالو गर्म रेती पामे भीरता और कुछ देर का मेहमान हो तुम पास रहो रेत जख्मों पे है आचल से उसे साफ करो आती है रोने की آواز سکینہ دیکھو جاؤ تم جا کے سکینہ کو سنبھالو اما گرم ریتی گرتا ہو سنبھالو اما گرم ریتی پمیں اے گزارش میری تم سے تو اب اتنی مادر اما بابا کی قسم ڈھاپ لو مو پر چادر دیکھا جائے گا نہ اب تم سے یہ کھونی منظر قتل ہوتا ہوں نگاہوں کو ہٹا لو اما گرم ریتی پا میں پیرتا ہوں سمالو اما گرم ریتی پیرتا ہوں سمالو ہوگی حشر کے میدان میں مجلس برپا فرش گم شہ کا بچھا ایگی جناب زہرہ حضرت شبیر کی آئے گی ریحان صدا آج جی کھول کے تم عشق بہالو 
अम्मा घर में रहती पा मैं गिरता हूँ संभालो अम्मा आखिर का वक्त के ना मेरा ये सलाम है सब आशी के हुसैन को मेरा सलाम है सामाशी ताब कर दे मेरे दिल के चैन का परवर दिगार वास्ता मौला हुसैन का रसवाई ओ मलालो मरस से गुना हुसैन हमको बचा ले तुझको बहत्तर का वास्ता हल कीजिए मुश्किल मेरी अब देर सितम है अब्बास अली तुमको सकीना की कसम है या मूसी काजिम हमें आफ से चुराओ या मूसी काजिम हमें आफ से चुराओ मेरे हसन हुसैन मुसीबत से बचाओ बर मोहम्मद वाले मोहम्मद सरवा السلام علیک یا رسول اللہ السلام علیک یا امیر المؤمنین امام المتقین السلام علیک یا سیدتنا مولاتنا فاطمت الزہرہ سیدت النساء العالمین السلام علیک یا ابا حسن المجتبہ ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ السلام علیک یا ابا عبداللہ وعلا الارواح اللہ تحلت بفنائک علیکہ منی جمیعا سلام اللہ ابدا ما بقیت و بقی اللیل و النہار ولا جعل اللہ آخر الاحدی منی لزیارتکم السلام علی الحسین وعلا علی ابن الحسین وعلا اولاد الحسین وعلا اصحاب الحسین السلام علیکہ وعلا اخیکہ ابی الفضل الابباس وعلا اختکہ الہورا زینب وعلا تست المعصومین من بنیک علی ابن الحسین زین العابدین ومحمد ابن علی الباقر وجعفر ابن محمد الصادق وموسی ابن جعفر القادم وعلی ابن موسی الرضا ومحمد ابن تکیل جواد وعلی ابن محمد الحادی والحسن ابن علی الاسغری السلام علیکہ یا صاحب الزمان السلام علیکہ یا خلیفة الرحمن السلام علیکہ یا شریق القرآن السلام علیکہ یا شہداء کربلا جمیعا ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ